So another very interesting problem around work kinetic energy theorem and what's given in this problem is there are two masses, one of 14 kilogram, other of 8 kilogram and the 14 kilogram mass is at a height of 5 meters and 14 kilogram mass is let go. So both the masses are at rest initially and 14 kilogram mass is let go and it drops by 5 meters. So the question is, what is the velocity of the 14 kilogram mass when it hits the ground? The other question is, to what height will the 8 kilogram mass rise up? So let's go ahead and solve part 1 of the problem first and we'll make use of work kinetic energy theorem which says that the final kinetic energy of a mass and then in this case we're taking the 14 kilogram mass first so the final kinetic energy of the mass minus its initial kinetic energy should equal to the work done by various forces on the mass and we know that there are only two forces acting on this mass one is the force of gravity which is acting in downward direction and let's call this F1 and the other is the tension which is acting in upward direction and let's call this T. Likewise we know that same tension T is pulling this mass as well and let's say the force of gravity on this mass is F2. So let's consider mass 1 first which is 14 kilogram and we can say that the final kinetic energy is half m and let's put m1 instead of 14 kilogram into v square velocity square which we have to find minus the initial kinetic energy which is zero because it starts from rest and the work done is the sum of work done by tension and the work done by force f1 so let's go ahead and write what is the work done by tension. So we can write the work done is the dot product of T which is a force with the displacement which is 5 meters because it comes down and comes to rest after it's moved 5 meters. The other force is the force of gravity which is represented by F1 and we can say that the work done by force F1 is a dot product of force and displacement which again is 5 meters. So we can say half m1 v square is equal to the product of absolute value of tension T into the displacement 5 in cos of the angle between these two vectors and we can see Tension is pointing in upward direction while the displacement vector is in the downward direction. So the angle between these two vectors is 180 degrees. Likewise, we can say that the work done by force F1 or Mg is nothing but the product of absolute value of force F1 into the displacement 5 into the cos of the angle between these two vectors and we can see that the angle between these two vectors is zero because mg and the displacement both are in the same direction. So what we get is on the left hand side if we substitute for m1 as 14 kilograms what we get is 7v square is equal to minus 5t because we know that cos of 180 degrees is minus 1 plus we substitute mg for F1 which would be therefore 14G into 5 and cos of 0 would be 1. So what we get is 7V square is equal to minus 5T plus 70G. Now likewise we can apply the same work kinetic energy theorem to mass M2 and let's go ahead and see what kind of equation we'll get. So on the left hand side we know that kinetic energy final would be half mv square and you got to remember that the velocity of 8 kilogram mass at any time would be same as the velocity of the 14 kilogram mass when it's coming down because if the velocity is different then string which is connecting the two masses would no more be taut it will kind of slacken because one mass would be moving faster than the other one so half mv square with velocity of mass m2 or 8 kilogram mass being same as that of 14 kilogram mass at any given point of time uh, minus kinetic energy initial which will be zero because it starts from rest 
should equal to the work done by tension T and force F2. So the work done by tension T would be dot product of T with the displacement phi because as 14 kilogram moves 5 meters down, 8 kilogram mass moves 5 meters up. So it will be a dot product of tension T with the displacement 5 plus the dot product of force F2 which is nothing but M2G or 8G with the displacement 5. Now left hand side becomes if we substitute for M as 8 what we get is 4V square is equal to the absolute value of tension multiplied by the displacement multiplied by the cos of the angle between the vector tension and the displacement. But this time around you will see that both the vectors are pointing in the same direction because the 8 kilogram mass is moving up and the tension is also acting in the upward direction. So we'll put the angle as 0 degrees. And the force of gravity here is 8g and let's write it let's continue to write it as f2 for now so we'll have f2 absolute value of f2 multiplied by the displacement 5 into cos of the angle between these two vectors that is force f2 and displacement and we can clearly see that force f2 is in a direction opposite to that of the displacement the 8 kilogram mass is moving up while the force f2 is acting in downward direction and therefore, the angle between these two vectors is 180 degrees. So, we'll write the angle as 180 degrees. So, what we get is 4V square is equal to 5T minus, and we'll go ahead and substitute Mg for F2, which, which is nothing but 8G into 5. And we've already taken the sign minus because cos of 180 degrees is minus 1. So, what we get is 4v square is equal to 5t minus 40g. So we have two equations here. You can see, let's label this as equation 1 and this as equation 2. And if we add these two equations, what you get is 11v square is equal to 5t minus 5t cancels. And on the right hand side, what you get is 30g. And if you solve for V, what you get is velocity is equal to 5.17 meters per second. So the second part of the problem is what maximum height does the 8 kilogram mass reach? Now we know that when the 8 kilogram mass has reached this height of 5 meters, its velocity is 5.17 meters per second second and it is traveling in upward direction so it's a simple problem of motion now where all we have to do is use a formula that when a mass reaches its maximum height its velocity is zero so we say that the final velocity square is equal to initial velocity square minus 2g into the displacement and here final velocity is zero Initial velocity is 5.17 meters per second minus 2 times 9.8 into delta x. And if we solve for delta x, what we get is delta x is equal to 1.36 meters. So the maximum height the mass has reached is 5 meters max height is equal to 5 meters which it has already attained plus the additional 1.36 meter jump it gets. So this equals 6.36 meters.